Hello everybody, Jonathan Reeves here. I'm an architect, educator and author. And today I'm gonna to share with you a very exciting part of content from a webinar that I recently did with Vectorworks on twin motion and how amazing twin motion is to use with Vectorworks. So if you're a Vectorworks 2022 user, the brilliant news is you now get twin motion for free until March 2022. So do snap that up. Let me know if I can help with any training on Vectorworks or twin motion or any Vectorworks related stuff at all. So do enjoy the video and I hope uh, you enjoy it very much. Thanks for watching, bye bye. Okay everybody, so what we're now gonna do is take a look at the new beta version of 2022 Twin Motion. Now this just came out while we were making these webinars and I just want to show you a couple of the really amazing new features. Um, so the first big new feature out the bag is that we now have an unbelievable new rendering mode called the Path Tracer. Now it's very easy to enable. All we need to do to click this is just click the button and you can see it starts rendering in a completely different style, uh, like a progressive sort of path trace, ray trace type rendering. Now it can take a little bit longer. Okay, so path tracing is much more computationally uh, expensive if you like, and you're definitely gonna see the renders take a lot longer. But look at the quality of things like the shadows, they're very crisp. Things like reflections, very accurate as well, and the global illumination as well, a lot more detailed. What you're gonna notice is when it gets to the end of this circle here, it's gonna finish a process called denoising, and then suddenly the image looks really nice and smooth. So if you compare the two images that you get with and without the pass tracer, you can really detect quite a big difference. So let's have a look at that. So what I'm gonna do is jump over to this image here, so here's an image, uh, just a normal image here. And all I've done here is I've duplicated the same image and I've turned on the path tracing. So let's just click turn on path tracing. You can see it renders up completely differently with those settings and it looks absolutely amazing. We can already begin to see some nice reflectivity coming into the image. So just let it get to the stage where it processes and you'll notice that the denoiser will kick in and make the image nice and smooth. To begin with, it does look a bit grainy. Now, one of the things that you can do with the path tracer, which is ever so nice, is actually change the settings. So if I click on here, then you'll see that we have different levels of settings. At the moment, I'm in high settings, so it's gonna take a bit longer. So if I go down to perhaps low settings to begin with, you see it's really quite quick and it's already finished. So what this means is on a really fast computer with a good GPU, you can almost work in real time. Um, my computer isn't quite handling that, but very few would to be honest. Um, I have heard from people who've got like a 3090 graphics card that they can almost work in real time in this sort of ray traced rendering mode, which is astounding. So if you look at the difference, watch carefully, if you look at the difference between me turning the ray tracing off and on, you really can see a big difference in these reflections, things like the light sources as well. So we're getting true reflectivity, um, better global illumination, and much, much nicer shadows. So that looks really, really cool. Let's take a look at another quick example. So I'll just zoom over to this image here. I mean, at first glance, it looks pretty nice. We can adjust things like the lighting and all those aspects to it as well. But here is the same image uh, with the path tracing turned on. So let's have a quick look at this one here. You see the progress bar rendering away. It looks like we might be in sort of medium settings for this one. So it's kind of relatively quick and that's looking good. So already significantly nicer image. Uh, the lighting looks great, the reflections as I've said, the global illumination, the shadows, those are the things to look for really. And then when I go back to the normal image, you know, it looks good, but it definitely looks a lot flatter as you can see. We'll give you one more example. Let's go to this one here. That's a nice one, lots of sort of shiny surfaces always um, look a lot nicer. Click onto the path traced version and let's just have a quick look at the settings. So for this one, we are in medium settings. Okay, so that will progress. If you do want to, you can actually type in the number of samples. So let me just let that one finish and we'll show you the difference. Look at that, absolutely glorious. It looks so nice. When you compare the two, you really, really you know, can see the difference. So we'll turn it back on again. What I'll do this time though, I'm just gonna go in and choose my own custom sample, let's say 32. 
Multiples of 16 seem to be quite favourable, so 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on. Um, but you can actually use any number you like. So that's really, really quite nice, actually. That's giving me a good quality of rendering, um, and I can still, still move around in that sort of, you know, view quite happily. And the beauty is I can navigate around nice and smoothly, okay, and then all I need to do when I want to see the render is just click Update and have a quick look at the Path Trace render. Now, there are a few things that path tracing doesn't yet support, things like decals, um, things like the weather system, a few other things as well. So it's mainly for still images, but it can be used for animations as well. But do expect um, significantly long render times as well while you're using the path tracing. And as I say, I wouldn't really recommend working in the path tracing because it is a bit sort of slower because of the, you know, the, the speed of the, uh, the rendering definitely looks a lot better, but takes longer. So all you do, you just uh, disable it when you're navigating around and doing the modeling, changing materials and all these things, and simply just enable it when you're ready. So let's just pop it on one more time. It's really, really fun to play with, as you can see. So that's a really nice uh, top new feature that they've added to InMotion, and basically it answers a lot of the questions that people had about maybe the final sort of rendering quality. So I do hope you enjoy that feature, and it's definitely something I know that I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with. Uh, let's just go for that one. I like this image a lot. Really, really nice. Look at the sky. Um, you can see that this one has a lovely sky to it. But when that path tracing finishes, it looks like we're in high settings at the moment, um, so it's going to take a little bit longer. Let's drop down just to low for now, just because it'll be quicker for you to watch. But even on low quality, you see lovely reflections on the water, uh, the lighting looks great, and things like the soft shadowing as well. Can't really see a huge difference between low, medium, and high. There is a difference there. Um, the render time, as I say, takes significantly longer in high settings. And the beauty is, when, you, you know, when you're actually working offline, what you can do is you can go into the image render settings themselves, so click More, go to Renderer, and this is where you can actually sort of type in the number of samples. So if you really wanted to, you know, you could do 1024. Um, now that clearly will take much longer to render. You know, it might be talking 15, 20 minutes for this one, but it will be well worth it um, at the end of the day. And if I can go and do some other work, that's perfect. So let's put it down to, say, 64 again. And that will drop down and render quite nice and quick. You can actually just turn the path tracing on and off as well. So that's kind of nice just to preview in there. You can also change the number of bounces. So this is the number of bounces of the light. Um, and if you kind of cl click a lower number, you know, that will significantly speed things up again. Perhaps you won't get quite so good reflections or transparencies, those sort of things as well. Um, but, you know, still look, looking really, really good. You can also turn the denoiser on and off. But obviously, if you have the denoiser off, although it's quicker, you do get this sort of graininess in the image. Sometimes that might be desirable. If you have a high number of samples and, and no denoiser, then you can actually get some nice sort of atmospheric looking images. Uh, but for most people, the denoiser is going to be something you're going to want to use. Over here, this Firefly brightness is just an extra little setting that you can turn down. Um, and it's just to do with if you get sort of extra little bright spots coming into the rendering. Uh, I'm not quite sure what a missive is. Um, OK, so that dismisses a global illumination and emissive images. And then you've got this anti-aliasing filter here, which I guess the higher you go, uh, slightly better quality, but again, will take a bit longer. So the real beauty with Twinmotion is the settings are nice and simple. Um, unlike many other renderers, you know, you can achieve these kind of renderings very straightforwardly. Okay, so let's just review the final path trace render of this lovely night shot. Okay, so there was one or two other features I just wanted to mention on the new uh, 2022 Twin Motion Preview version that are well worth a look. So the first one is if you just pop out the side panel and go back to the libraries, you're going to notice a wonderful new section here called Sky Domes. Now, there's loads of different sections, so let's take a look at a couple of these. Um, let's just go into the standard one. Now, you can see to begin with, uh, if you do want to download these, you've got to click on the icon to actually download them and sign in. I've actually downloaded a couple already. So let me drag and drop this one into the scene just for a second and load that one in. Okay, and then you can now see we've got a really nice sort of sky dome in the model. Um, we can change the intensity here. So we can kind of slide that up or down. 
you can see it's having quite a big impact on the image. We can match the sun direction. So what that means is when you rotate the sky dome, um, the sun will rotate with it. And look at that, it's absolutely lovely. The lighting quality, and the way the sky moves with the brightness. So this new feature alone is, uh, I think, a really nice addition to the twin motion sort of arsenal, if you like, the sky domes. Um, sky dome affects lighting. Okay, yeah, you can see a big difference actually when you click that especially if you look in these sort of darker shadowed areas. And um, we've got the smog on and off as well. Um, what you can do as well, if you really want to, is combine that, of course, with the path tracer. And that really does create spectacular images. So the sky dome giving the global illumination and the path tracer for the final renders. Um, again, we're in sort of um, high settings. You can see it's refining already. Just let that one run for a few seconds. Now, for me, sky domes are great because they provide this HDRI, high dynamic range imaging uh, within the software. And as well as the good standard of uh, sky domes that you get with Twinmotion included, like there's a huge array here, you can actually load in um, your own HDRIs, and I've done this as well. So let's just take a look at the difference with another sky dome, let's see if we've got something else here. Um, so let's go for an overcast one. So all I need to do there is click here. So first of all, I've just got to sign in. Okay, and once we're signed in, we can click here. That'll take a second to download. So I'll come back to that one in a minute. Okay, I may have another one downloaded already. Yeah, I've got this one here already. You can see the icon is uh, available. So I can just drag that into the scene now if I'd like to. Let that process for a second. And basically, you're just going to get a completely different looking image. Um, the sky dome itself will really change the way the lighting works. Okay, so let's turn the path tracer off. So again, the, the best way to actually sort of see this, if you go back to your image, let's have a look. Okay, let's go to this one. Let's go to more. And that's fine. Path tracing is off. Let's go to the lighting. Sky Dome off, Sky Dome on. You can kind of immediately see the difference. Okay, so you can see our overcast Sky Dome has now downloaded. Let's drag that into the scene and let that load in. Uh, you get the object creation box popping up while it processes just for a second. And we should immediately see, just when it loads in, the impact of the lighting. There we go. So here we are, here's our Sky Dome. Let's play with the intensity. That, get some really nice sort of images. That's the brightness, if you like, of the sky dome itself. And then we've got the uh, ability to rotate it to get different sort of outlooks, like. And we can have the sky dome effect or interact with the lighting, which is obviously a preferable setting. Okay, so another really nice aspect to the HDRIs is that if you do want to, you can actually load your own in. So to do this, you just click onto the dots here, click open. And basically, go and find some HDRIs that you've downloaded. Okay, so I've already downloaded a few here from one of the websites out there. And I can basically load those in, and they come in quite nicely. And you can see, there we go, I can sort of rotate that background. And you see it has quite a big impact on the um, sort of shadowing of the image as well. Now, some of these HDRIs are going to work well for you, others not so well. So obviously, you've got to judge that quite carefully. Let's load in one more here. See how this one looks? Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's a nice one. And you can see it's having a nice impact on, on the lighting. So yeah, just make sure you kind of choose wisely. Um, if you do want to, just take a look at some of the websites out there. This is a nice one that I found, Polyhaven. There's literally hundreds of free ones on there for externals and internals as well. So these all seem to be free. Um, all you need to do is click on them, have a quick look, have a look at the file size and download it, and then that's it. You can load it straight in to Twinmotion now. And the high dynamic range image actually provides the lighting as well. So HDRIs are really, really nice. Um, now, if you do want to go back to the pre-prepared ones, you can just drag them straight into the dock like this. So I think it's a really nice addition to Twinmotion 2022, the sky domes. I uh, really like the way you can kind of play around with the lighting and so on as well. And then, as I say, once you combine that with the new path tracing capabilities, um, you get the best of both worlds, really, because you get the HDRI providing very nice lighting, 
Let's just drop that down to medium settings. Uh, and you get fantastic sort of reflections of things like the clouds and things in this nice shiny sort of paving here. Um, but the Path Tracer and the HDRI together look absolutely incredible. When we look at the global illumination and the quality of this image, um, as soon as you kind of turn it off, you do notice quite a big difference. So yeah, very, very exciting new feature, the Sky Dome plus the Path Tracing together. So another nice new feature that they've introduced in Twin Motion 2022 is the new panorama sets. Now you can see I've already set up a few panoramas here, but all you need to do if you would like to set one of these up is navigate to a viewpoint and then when you're ready, you just click create pano. Now that will create a new panographic image, which is basically a 360 degree image that you can pan around and you can update that as required, but that's all we need to do. And now if we want to, we can actually set that to be either path traced or just normal, um, normal rendering. So now what we can do is go back to our media doc, go to panorama sets and basically click to um, either access one of our existing sets of panoramas or we can basically create a new one. So in order to add that new panorama, just click the plus sign and drag the panorama down into the location and position I would like it in the dock. And the good thing is here, you can just reposition these as required. So you can kind of like tell your story of the design and the design proposals as you kind of move around the spaces. So kind of try and put them in a logical sequence makes sense. Now what's really, really nice about these is we just click onto the export tab. We then get the full panorama set that we can export in one go. And then once it's exported, it'll be uploaded to the Twinmotion cloud. As you can see, this is early access. So um, I think they're still developing this a little bit, but it seems really, really uh, well developed so far. And you'll see in a second when we visit the cloud, how nice it is to visit the panoramas and show your client those experiences. Okay, so our new panorama set has been uh, rendering. It's uploaded to the cloud already. We've got the export successful dialog popping up and all I need to do now is click open twin motion cloud to be able to go and visit our new panorama. So here it is, Panorama Set 3, I can rename it, I can do all sorts of things, and I can send the link to a client if I would like to, with or without a password. But let's just go ahead and view this one. And this basically is the new Twin Motion Cloud that I've created using my path trace renders. So look at those, these look really nice, really nice renderings. And what's nice about them is I can basically click to visit different areas of the scene. Look at that, looks lovely. Okay, very nice. Let's go full screen in fact. If I want to, I can also pop open these aspects here. And this is quite a nice way to be able to jump between the various sort of different scenes. So what I really like about the twin motion panoramas and the presenter cloud is you can sort of essentially tell the story. You can still give the client some interactivity and the ability to sort of pan around, but you're kind of pre-scripting, if you like, where you want them to go. Um, you're not giving them complete free reign to wander around the model and maybe look at it so you hadn't actually finished yet. I also really like the fact you can kind of get that final quality uh, rendered image with the ray tracing or path tracing as well. It's just a fantastic way for you to be able to share your projects, get feedback from the clients and really understand um, how the design is sort of feeling. And look at that for that internal space. So the rendering quality on the path tracer makes for a fine render. So let's have a final review of some of the images we've created during this webinar. And I think you'll agree with me that Twinmotion is a perfect partner for Vectorworks. You do your modeling in Vectorworks, take it across to Twinmotion, where you can add lots of life and really revolutionize your rendering. And I would definitely recommend learning Vectorworks 3D modeling with Twinmotion for the rendering, for animations and stills. So thanks ever so much for watching everybody. I really hope to see you on my YouTube channel soon and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye bye.